In this next video, I'm going to talk about how audio routing works in Machine. Now, if you've worked with any other DAWs or if you're just comfortable with audio production in general, you might be familiar with this concept of audio routing. But if you're not, I just want to show you how Machine is set up by default, just to sort of get you uh, comfortable with how this works. Um, so let's take a look at Machine. Um, by now, you're probably comfortable with the workflow, sort of how these sounds are arranged and, and how the groups are working and how the master bus is set up to sort of, um, sort of bring everything together. Um, but if we go, go through the audio routing example here, let's just do a quick example. Um, so I'm going to start with my snare drum here. And audio routing is sort of following the progress of sound, so the audio signal throughout the project. Um, so working with our snare drum here, audio starts as a snare sample, as the actual wave sample. And from there, the audio is sent to the group. And the group sums all of the inputs from the 16 different sounds within that individual group. So the same thing happens for all of the different groups across the project. Now each group takes that uh, sort of summed signal and then sends that to the master bus, and the master bus then sums all of those. So it's sort of like a hierarchy. Audio starts at an individual sound, moves to the sort of intermediate level as a group, and then is finally sent to the master bus where it ends up. So the really neat thing is that even though this is the default template, we can go ahead and change that and get some flexible routing options going. Um, so it can get pretty confusing if you really start messing with things, um, but I'm going to show you just two quick examples, or maybe a few more. I just want to show you a couple of examples of how this can work and how you can apply it in your project. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how you can use routing to sort of bypass group level effects. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and select my group level up here. I'm on the plugin menu. I'll go ahead and do shift and browse to uh, select an effect. I'll just go ahead and select a reverb and then load this on my drum group. And so now that I've done this, my drums sound like this. So say you have some sounds that you want to not be affected by the reverb. The way we can do that is within audio routing and by sending the sound not to the group level, not to the intermediate level, but directly to the master bus. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'll exit my browse menu and all the routing options are going to be in channel and then all the way over to input or output. Um, so output section here, we are on our sound level um, and this is our snare. Say we want to bypass the reverb for our snare. We see that our audio by default is going to our group level, but we don't want that. We want to send it to our master level. So we'll just go ahead and turn this over to master. Now it sounds like this. So instead of that snare sample being sent to the intermediate group level and then going through the reverb effect, it's going directly to the master bus and not going through that reverb. Um, so we also have an option to just completely turn this audio off. And we also have some options to send it to different sounds um, within machine. And we'll get into those a little bit later. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna turn this back to group as a default and then go ahead to my plugin menu and my group level and remove this reverb so we can work with some different things. Um, so that is one way you can use routing by bypassing different effects. And you can also use routing to set up a send effect within machine. So to do this, I'm first going to um, select an empty pad. I'll go onto my sound level over here, make sure I'm on plugin, and then go back into the module browse menu and then load up a reverb and then exit this. So now we have just loaded a reverb module onto the empty effects chain of this sound. Um, so this is actually going to make any sound if you hit it. It's just going to be sort of a container for all of our effects. Um, so now that we have this sound set up, we can go ahead and work with other sounds and sort of send those sounds to this reverb that we just set up. Um, so let's go ahead and say we want to send our snare to that effect. Let's go ahead and select that. Make sure we're on channel. That's where our routing options are going to be. And then send our audio instead of group. We can go ahead and turn it over to group B1 sound 13. So that is telling us that our audio, instead of going to the group, is going to the sound tab over here. So it sounds like this. Now the neat thing is that um, the sort of the benefit of setting this effect up this way, rather than us adding it on the individual sound, is that we can easily send other sound tabs to this effect. Um, say we want to send our reverb to the hi-hat as well. Go ahead, select that, and just change our destination over to the same sound tab. And you can do that for any other sound within your project. Um, now, if we want to change the level of reverb, we can go um, back in here onto our, our send effect, go back into the plugin menu, and then change the mix. Um, but this can get a little bit constraining because we can't change the reverb amount for any of our individual sounds sending to that effect. Um, so if we want to do that, we can go ahead and route this a different way. Um, so I'll go back into my snare over here, and then instead of sending 
Um, instead of sending the output directly to this pad, we can send an additional output to that pad called an auxiliary output. So I'm going to go ahead back into my channel options over here to get to the routing menu and change my audio destination. This is the main destination. I'll change that back to group how it was originally. Um, so instead of sending this output to that, uh, to that effect, we can go ahead and send an aux output to that effect. So that's the same menu here. We'll just go ahead and select it. And now what we sort of have is this sound running not only to the group output as it is by default, but also to that, uh, to that reverb that we added on this pad here. So it sounds like this. Now the cool thing is that we can change how much the sound is being affected simply by changing the uh, level of the aux output. So we can uh, get some sounds like this. And I'll run through that process again using my hi-hat to show you how it works. Um, so let's go back to the first page, make sure our main output is set to the default group level, and then go to my aux output and send that over to the um, sound 13 on group B1. And like I said, you can go ahead on any of your sounds and do the same thing by sending it to this reverb effect. And you can see over here on the right screen, we also have a secondary aux output so you can go ahead and work with that as well, added flexibility. You also have options to change the order, either post or pre, and so you really have a ton of flexibility with these routing options. Now there's a few more things that I'd like to talk about, so I'm just gonna go back to the beginning here and talk about um, some additional features within this, um, this output menu. Um, so like I talked about, we have our main output, we also have an option to send it to the queue, um, and we also have level and pan options right here. Um, this is just the main sort of volume of your, uh, of your sound, but the nice thing is that um, with these knobs, we can actually automate that level. Just like any other effect parameter, all we have to do is start playback, hold the auto write button, and then just turn the knob that we want to change. Um, so that is the way that you can, uh, that you can automate your sound um, level and pan. Um, you also have some options for audio mute over here. And I had to read up on what this does, but um, say you have a sound with a really long tail on it, um, say some sort of echo or reverb, and then you use the mute or solo options over here, that's going to make sure that it mutes that long tail and also any other sounds that may have played previously. So basically it's just muting the audio rather than the MIDI of your individual sound. So between input and output options, both for our sound and group levels, we have lots of different routing options. Um, this tutorial just scratches the surface, but I wanted to show you the different options that you can use with routing audio and the different things you can achieve. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. It's a little bit of a tricky subject, so if you have any questions, just leave them below. And if not, I will see you on the next video.